It's easier to build strong children than to repair a broken man, okay? Because a lot of us in here are, are broken. We come into this truth being broken, all right? I want to open up with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 regarding our children. Let me get my glasses because I can't see what I wrote. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Start at 1. Verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments that the Lord your God command to teach you and that you might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. That you might, might as fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee that thou and thy son and thy sons in all the days of thy life and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may be increased mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land that falleth with milk and honey. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So and Moses is discussing with us, explaining to us all, one of the process to build uh, strong children is to teach them God's commandments. And he gives you the blueprint. He says to teach them diligently um, when thou sittest in your house. Now that don't mean necessarily you going through each law because children like visuals. Children need scenarios. Children need explanations in order to understand. You as the parent have to create the situation and ask them what would you do in this situation. For example, read that again verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. Now, when, when you walkest by the way, meaning when you're walking down the street, wherever you are on your, on your way, you have to create situations and challenge your children to see if they grasp the understanding of what it means by thou shalt not bear false witness, that they may grasp the meaning of what it means test, by test, thou shalt not steal. What it means by, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You have to create situations, scenarios, or visuals, so that your child can grasp it in different situations. Read that again, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down... Now when they're about to go to sleep, many times parents read bedtime stories to children. But your bedtime story should be based upon God's commandments, okay? Not uh, 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 Jack and Jill went up a hill to catch a pail of water, not that. You create the scenario for your children or create the story for your children. Or how about this, read the history for your children in easy to be understood words regarding God's commandments so that your child, whether male or female, will grasp the understanding of that law. Read. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou rises, risest up. And when you wake up in the morning, that's what it means, when thou risest up. So when you wake up, again, bring forth a particular moment in history of our ancestors. Ask them, what law is this pertaining to? Do you understand what that means? Okay, you have to, as the parent, create the scenario. Give me Psalm 78 and 1. Let's start there. So right now I'm beginning with building strong children. Okay, because they are the next. If, if our Lord don't come back and during this time, this next generation of kids, they are going to be the next leaders. Okay, so let's read Psalm 78 and start at 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. When it says I will open my mouth in a parable, means an illustrated story. That's how the Most High, many of the scriptures are written in parables. Another term for parables, in the Bible you will read the word similitude. You will read the word allegory. All referring to the same thing. Go ahead. Verse 3, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, 
We will not hide them from, uh, from their children. You see that we will not hide them from their children. Many times, some parents, I've heard some mothers say, I'm going to wait till my child gets 12 years old. <laughs> Where you get that from? <laughs> you didn't wait till your child was 12 when you taught him Christmas or Thanksgiving or Valentine's Day or New Year's Eve. You taught him from when they was out the womb. So likewise shall it be with the Most High's words, okay? You didn't wait till they was 12 when you taught them about Santa Claus or some of you in here, Kwanzaa, whatever you was into, okay? So likewise, it says we will not hide them from their children. Read. Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord uh -huh. and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. You know why it's important to show them God's strength and his wonderful works that he hath done to build faith? To build faith because this is a faithless world okay our people have become faithless so you have to you as the parent in order to build strong children you have to instill that into them you got to teach them God's strength and his wonderful works the things that he did for Daniel the things that he did for Jeremiah the things that he did for Moses Miriam and Aaron that's what the parents job is okay it's not so much the, the church's job, although we, we come, we uh, touch on it, but you at home, that's really your job, okay? And one of the, like at, in New York, we got a new group of people come in and their children, it's hard to teach them to sit down. And that goes back to the parent. The parent's job is to teach them children to sit down and listen, okay? That is the parent's job, mother or father, Okay? <laughs> Really, mother, I'll start there. Really, you mamas. Bishop. Sisters always want to know, what's my role? Well, we're giving you your, your role. You, you remember when we was growing up and somebody said, I'm going to tell your mother or your father, and you froze. Yes. These kids now, they're like, tell my mother. Yep. Tell my father. Exactly. Exactly. So, it is the parent's role. It is your duty. You are commanded to have them children sit down. That's why I said, when you sit us by the way, when you rise up, when you uh, huh? lie down. That is the parent's job, okay? We can do but so much. Like we created the uh, IUIC Watch and Read to help you parents out. Some of you have created coloring books to help you parents out. But there's more to be done. There's much more work that we can do, okay? And once we create, create it, it's the parent's job to sit down with the children. What are you going to say? Yeah, that's beautiful to have the... You know, this is, this is right on point, what the bishop was bringing. The spirit is definitely on him to bring this thing out. Uh, he mentioned about watch and read, the coloring books, and all of the things that we are trying to aid the parents in dealing with their children. It's just that. It's an aid. It's, it's, it's an help. But you, as the parent, have to use that and come up with those scenarios. I like how you was bringing that out, like the scripture that we was reading in Deuteronomy 6 and 7 about teaching them diligently because I was looking at that word what does it mean to be diligent in teaching your children that means the parents have to be creative in coming up with scenarios and asking their child what would you do how would you apply the law to this when these conversations don't take place between the parent and the child your children end up in garbage that's what they end up in learning stupidity and foolishness from television and BET so it's important that, our, that the parents, they have to, not, not, not just making a choice, they have to interject and, and get between the child and the television or whatever other influences that would get to your child. Because at three, just like you said, when they come out of the womb, Christmas, Easter, all that crap is being given to them and you sitting up there talking about something, I'm going to wait. By the time you wait, your child is in the garbage. Or oh, juvenile detention. Juvenile detention. Read on. Verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. Right. The Most High never gave us denominations. He gave to us testimony and commandments. And let me explain the commandment to you. Many times in the New Testament or even in the book of Maccabees, you will read the word religion. Religion comes from the Greek word religio, which means to hold back, keep down, and restrain. That's referring to God's commandments. So what is our religion? God's commandments. Our race, our nationality, is that we are the Israelites. I hope y'all know the difference between the two. Okay? Your, your religion is not Israelites. Because people say, oh, what's your religion? Israelites. No, stop, stop. 
Your religion is God's laws, God's commandments. That's what hold back keeps, uh, hold back, confines and restrains. And restrain. Meaning from what? From your own sins, your own lust. Your own self. Your own self, right. That's what uh, the commandments do. Holds you back from committing adultery, restrains you from stealing. That's your religion. Your race, your identity, your nationality is God, I mean, is Israel. <laughs> Read on. And appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. You see that? That they should make, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. So that is a commandment to teach our kids. Okay? I'm again, I, I used to do this in the past. I might get back to it. Y'all, when y'all go back to your respective uh, camps, start testing these kids. Randomly. Mm -hmm. Ask them questions. You and guess what? If your kid don't know, it's gonna shine a light on the parent. Because some of you parents tell you what some of y'all do. You want us to teach the kids. Some and I'm gonna talk, talk about New York just for a moment. Sisters will bring their kids in, take them up to the class, and leave them there, knowing dad going well, they have not taught their child how to sit down. That child is upstairs raising cane. Like a little chia pet. Running around, screaming, kicking chairs over, popping other kids upside the head. Can you teach my kid? That's an ostrich. Right, that is an ostrich. Sisters, that is called an ostrich. The proverbial ostrich. There she goes again. They go to neck. Go, 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 go. There she go. Mm, mm. That is how ostrich sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Read that. Read on. <laughs> Psalm 78 verse 6 that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born you see that that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born go ahead who should, re who, who should arise and declare them to their children so that, that generation of children should arise and declare them to their children so what are we doing what is the most high teaching us to break the generational curses that's upon each and every one of us in order to do that, it comes with teaching. You've got to lay that foundation of God's commandments. It gets built up in one generation. That generation teaches the next generation, and so on, and so on, and so on. Until we get to the point where we're ready for the second coming of the Lord. Because a lot of us right now, we ain't ready. We sick. Some of us are real mentally sick. We broke. We broke in. Read on. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. But keep his commandments. Now we're going to hit a, a serious one now. Get Sirach 30. I always tell you, I'll, I'll, wait, I'll save that till we read the verse. Hmm. Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 30. One well, verse 3. Nope, start at 1. Verse 1. Sirach chapter 30, verse 1. He that loveth his son causes him off to fill the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. So that rod deals with correction. He that loveth his son calls him often to, <coughs> to feel the rod, meaning correction. Read on. He that chasteneth his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. You want to feel good when your children are around your friends? Why? Because they know how to conduct themselves. They know how to act. Go ahead. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. Now, that's what we were reading in Psalm 78. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. This is why the white man established the school system. They don't want us teaching our children. So they have set up the, uh, the school unions and things of that nature. They have instituted lies in the school system to teach our kids. Because a lot of us who may not homeschool, we have to, un we have to deprogram them from what they've been learning in school. Okay? Deprogram them. And it takes time. It takes effort. Okay? Read that again. Verse 3. <clears throat> He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Right, you want to rejoice. You want to rejoice with your friends because of your children being raised up right. Read on. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. That's called a memorial. You want that type of memorial. When you pass on, your children are a reflection of you. That's what you want. Go ahead. While he lived, 
he saw and rejoiced. I'll give in you him. an example. I'll give you one of the one of the. I ain't gonna call his name, and it, it was a terrible thing. But I always reflect on it. One of the teachers in the old school, his daughter, uh, she left the truth, and um, she uh, she became a stripper. If I'm mis if I'm correct, incorrect, let me know. I believe it's a stripper or a lesbian. One of the two. It was a Can't stripper. Remember. Stripper. Yes. And now, wicked Israel uh, is using his daughter's Facebook page as a mockery against him. Okay. All we can do is teach our children, but when they get old, older, it's going to be their decision whether they stay in this truth or whether they forsake it. That's going to be every child's cross that that child got to bear. And as parents, we can't force them to stay in this truth. They're going to get to that age and say, I'm about to do my own thing. I, I don't want to do this no more. You're gonna, some of you are going to see it. Some of you may not. Read on. Verse 5. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. Y'all see that? That's what we want. When we pass on, we left behind an avenger. Someone that's in your, a reflection of you, which is a reflection of God's laws. Go ahead. And you won't be sorrowful when, on your deathbed. You're going to be happy. Go ahead. Because you've done, you've done your job. Go ahead. And one that shall requite kindness to his friends. Because you know your child is going to requite kindness to your friends. Go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 7. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. Don't make too much of your kids. We we'll always tell the women that boys run around fall down, bust their knee, fall out of trees. That's what they do. They get hurt. Let that boy sit there and cry. Huh. Oh, no, my baby. Ah, ah, ah. Don't make too much of your kids. Okay, you're going to make them a little mamby pamby. Yellow make me sad, boy. Hmm. You like when you ride a bike and you fall off. How many, sometimes you fall off 26 times. Right, right, right. Bust your knees, you're bleeding all over the place. Good. I remember my mama told me, don't leave the house. I left the house anyway. So I went into my neighbor's yard to play basketball, and they had one of them fences with the forks. And it starts to rain. So I'm playing ball. Duh, duh, duh. I'm, then I said, oh, I better hurry. My mom's about to get home. I climb over, and I slip, and the fence goes in my arm and rips the flesh up. I'm running home. I see the muscles. I see blood is gushing. I'm running home screaming, Mama! So she's in the house. She says, where was you? I said, Mama! I asked you a question. Where was you? <laughs> I'm showing her the arm. She said, I see that. Yeah. Where was you? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's what she did. I, I like that. Yeah, I'm so like, I'm about to die. Like and she don't care. <laughs> 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 she went and wrapped, got a towel, wrapped it around it, called the neighbor and said, hey, can you take me down to the hospital? This idiot over here disobeyed what I told him. Yeah. I'm screaming and crying. I really thought I was going to die. <laughs> But it seemed like she didn't give a dag on. That's some good training. She didn't make no, she didn't give a hoot. So I got that same thing from her. I don't care. You bust your knee up, all right. Where we at? What verse we at? Verse 8. That's education. Jump over to verse 11. <laughs> verse 11. Give him no liberty in his youth and weak not at, at his folly. That's the problem with many parents today. We give them too much liberty. Okay. You know what? Jacob and Leah had that problem too. Real quick. Hold on. Give me that in Genesis uh, 34. We read it today. Who's reading for me? I was Apollo. Uh, Apollo. I was Apollo. Give me Genesis 34. I believe it is. Read verse 1. Genesis chapter 34 and verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. So Dinah, the daughter of Leah, she went out to see the daughters of the land. La, 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 la. I'm interested to see what the sisters are doing. What are the, what are the women doing? We know we get many a phone call about women who call and say, I just want to know, what are the sisters doing? I said, this ain't, what, I don't know, what, what, sis, what do, you, what do you think this is? I just want to know what the sisters are doing. That's all her whole interest. Let's read what happened to Dinah. Read on. And when Shekim, the son of Hamar, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her. And lay with her and defiled her. He defiled her. Why? Because she was wandering about, not being a keeper at home. I want to see what the sisterhood is doing. Hmm. And look what happened. Wandering about. Go back to uh, 30, Sirach 30. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 11. Give him no liberty in his youth 
and weak not at his folly. You know what that means? Don't give him too much free time. Children should not have too much free time. And we tend to give them free time. It, it, some, some sisters who take care of Edomite children, they have told us and said that um, the Edomite parent will say, only allow my child to watch one hour of television. That's it. After that is chores or homework, them things. Yeah. But with us, black Latin children, we got maybe eight hours of free time and one hour of homework or chore. It's backwards. We are backwards. And Esau got all their training from what we're reading here. It's just with us. We're the people of the book, but won't apply what is written. Bishop, what you're saying there is super heavy because I've seen exactly what he's talking about. I've seen our women taking care of Edomite kids, and they will not deal with them the way they deal with their own kids. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. And I mean, I've seen this thing. And just like what you said, they give the, what they call the nanny. They give her instructions, do not give my child no more than an hour of television. And they're, and they're selective about what hour they watch. They ain't not going to watch any foolishness. They'll tell them the kind of program that you are allowed to watch. If the program is two hours, they say at the middle of it, when the one hour is up, cut it off. Yep, exactly. Kid might start whining, but I told you to cut it off. Yeah, cause and they'll stop it. But when it comes to us... That same nanny would go home with, the same, with, with her children and allow them to do everything. Tell myself, I don't want to oppress my children. I don't want to do stupid. Pure stupid. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, uh, but what Bishop says is true because I can be a witness to that. My wife used to work for a white family. It's exactly what you say, Bishop, the white woman told my wife. Our, our TV, then she honored that thing. You understand? They honored it where he's the enemy. But when they got to their own kids, for some reason, you mean like you say, totally stupidity. You understand? Because the white woman that is the seed of the wicked understood what the TV would do to the kids. And that's their telling. You understand? That's They're telling point. you. <laughs> They're telling you, man. <laughs> exactly. What verse you at now? Mm. Verse 12. Go ahead. Bow down his neck while he is young. You see that? Bow down his neck while he is young. Some of you are going to wait till you get 15 when he's 200 pounds of muscle hit your back. <laughs> and he can hit your back. We, they're situated in Brooklyn. We have seen children beating the hell out of their fathers saying, Dad, I told you go back and now pow! Knock the dad upside the head. I've seen it. That's because you want to wait till the child get 15, 200 pounds of all muscle with an attitude. Read that again. Verse 12, bow down his neck while he is young. So God's law teaches us to bow down his neck while he is young. Go ahead. Beat him on the sides while he is a child. Notice what it says. Beat him on the, on the sides. That's that thigh area while he is a child. That's like that toddler age. Don't, don't wait till they get that, that rebellious teenage year to do it. Because what's going to happen? They're going to say, I'm going to tell a white man on you. I'm going to dial 911. That's what's going to happen. The most high is giving you telling you how to uh, pop that behind and at what age range. He says, while they are a child. Okay. Let's what? Read. Let's and oh, oh, also, I always say that you high yellow babies up in here. Be mindful of them high yellow children some of y'all got. They leave handprints, red marks. Then you taking them to the doctor. Doctor go, how to get that red mark on the leg? <laughs> and mommy beat me. Oh, what? Your mother beat you. You better school them children before you take... I used to school my kids. Before we get to the doctor, you don't know nothing. <laughs> you don't say nothing. Because <laughs> they will take you away and put you in a white family's house and you're going to get jacked up. Right. I'll tell them. Yeah. You better tell them, kids. <laughs> so, so, Bishop, you whoop the light-skinned kids with their clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The dark-skinned ones, you strip them down. The light-skinned ones, keep your clothes on. Why are you about to get a whooping? <laughs> See, when, you, when you're dark, it's, it's totally different. <laughs> My parents would make us take baths before we get them, so your skin would be all tender. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these brothers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he give you the baby oil after you come out the shower. <laughs> 
What verse we at? Verse 12. Go ahead. Bow down his neck while he is young and beat him on the sides while he is a child. Lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee and so bring sorrow to thine heart. Now, some parents in here, we've heard tales and stories. Some of you, you figure that you can outsmart the most high. He says beat him on the sides while he is a child. You get a 13-year-old and decide because they're rebellious, you're not going to feed them. That's called child neglect. Yeah. You will go to jail behind that. Listen good. You think you want to do other than what the scriptures say and say, I'm not going to feed them for a day. You're going to go to jail. I'm telling y'all, y'all could take it with a grain of salt if you want. But the Most High is telling us how and around the age range to do it. Read that again. Verse 12. Verse 12. Bow down his neck while he is young. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. And that don't mean punch him in the chest. That don't mean punch him in the mouth. That don't mean smack him, smack him upside the head. It means exactly what it says. Okay. Bishop, that, yeah. Also, there was a case, a lot of you know about it, on YouTube, about a family that was taken in custody for abuse of their children. And it started with the oldest daughter in her wickedness where the father was trying to discipline a child that was not his okay that oldest child was not his that child was too far gone for that man to step into the relationship and start trying you don't you're not stepping into no 15 year old and i think they were only married what two years he said that he had problems with her when she was 14. you're not coming into no relationship with no grown kids and you're going to start laying hands on them that's not logical Okay, so that's why a lot of time the bishop used to say in the beginning stages of IUIC, you need to find out the relationship that, uh, that you're coming into, know how those kids are, know how the mother's been dealing with the child, know if that child has connections to her biological father, because that father will say something like, if he put his hands on you, I'm going to beat that Negro down. There's a lot of factors that play into you coming and being stepmom or stepdad and you gotta look at those things don't think all of a sudden you're gonna beat a child that has never been whipped before with no consequences that's foolish read that again <clears throat> verse 12 bow down his neck while he is young and beat him on the sides while he is a child Let's see, wax stubborn. It says, it's telling you what happens if you don't obey. It says that child will wax stubborn if you don't bow down his neck while he is young and beat him on the sides when he is a child. It says he will wax stubborn. Go ahead. And be disobedient unto thee. And this child will be disobedient unto thee. And so bring sorrow to thine heart. And so bring sorrow to thine heart. Now that's a terrible, that thing, that covers a lot. And so bring sorrow to thine heart. The jails is filled with children like that. You got a lot of pregnant young girls because of this. And so bring sorrow to thine heart. By not obeying this here, a lot of you parents are grief stricken as a result when that male child or female child comes of age around 15, 16, 17. The girls are opening their legs, popping up babies from different men. The boys is locked up in jail, gangs. Right. These are the, these are the results that cause you to sorrow. Go ahead. Verse 13. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor. You see that? The Bible says chastise thy son and hold him to labor. Give them chores. Give them responsibilities. Okay? Hold, the, hold him to labor. Go ahead. Lest his lewd behavior because be... Because if you don't, you give him too much free time, too much liberty. What happens? Lest his what? Lewd behavior... Be an offense unto thee. Right, because he want to run around and sex everything. He got time, nothing but time on his hand. What are you going to say? Yeah, see that word where it says wax stubborn? That part that we was reading? You know what it means to wax stubborn? Meaning that it's never changing. Once it wax stubborn, see, you can have stubborn, that could be temporary. But once it's wax stubborn, it's done. That's, that's what I was reading, what I was listening to, how it was coming out. If you don't chastise them, they will wax stubborn, meaning the only thing that's left for them after that is death. And it less is lewd behavior because it gets to that point where you can't do nothing with them. They're, not, they're fit for jail and death. That's it. 
Exactly. A lot of times, uh, I don't know about the, well, I do know about this generation. Now, y'all don't hold these kids to labor. Like in the school, we have the kids sweep up after class and all that. You got to give these children chores. Let these children know how to clean the dishes, do this, how to paint. Put them to labor. Because what happens if you don't? As kids, what do we all, some of you older ones, y'all know the game. What do we used to play? Run, catch, and kiss. Spin the bottle. Spin the bottle. Things like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know about it. Run, catch, and kiss. Things that will get you locked up today that would, might have been fun back in the day. Don't have your kids learn them games. They go to jail. <laughs> Bishop, <Yeah. laughs> that scripture is heavy because when the Mosai says it's lewd behavior, he's telling you what's inside of your young children. Nastiness. That's what their mind is going to go to. Nastiness. Let me see yours and I'll show you mine. What's that game? Play house. Let's play or house. Doctor. doctor. I'll be the daddy, you be the mommy. That's right. Hey, Never when they played house, you saw them with a bucket of paint, bucket of paint playing in a house, or with a broom and a mop sweeping, or they was cooking. It was always something nasty. That's why he says that's his lewd behavior. That nastiness starts when you when you're young. And if you're honest with yourself and you look at how you was when you was young, you would know, okay, I'm gonna stop my kids from going to that route. That's the thing that gets me. That's the thing that gets me. Some of us will grow up knowing what our childhood was like, but then when it comes to our own children, Not they're like, so innocent. Exactly. Oh, they wouldn't think that way. You stupid as hell if you think that. You did it. You don't think that with, the, with today's foolishness, they're not going to think that way? That's right. Even worse. they faster, smarter. They got more technology. The scriptures say uh -huh. that each generation is worse and worse and worse. But some of you think that your kids are better than the people from the past. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, for those of you fathers, mothers, if you have sons and daughters, keep your eyes on your daughters. Check them regularly. Some of you is clueless. Listen, your daughters can get touched by, by that little brother. Some of you is clueless when it comes to these things. You got to keep your eyes on those girls. You got to check those girls. You got to check it. That's your job. Exactly. And uh, watch out for them little nasty uncles. Y'all know them little nasty uncles you got. And your little daughter want to sit in his lap. And she just love Uncle Harry. And she's in his lap just rocking like this. Then she's, what's that? What's that? Y'all don't know what I'm talking Y'all know what I'm talking about. Watch them little nasty uncles you got and your daughter sitting in their laps. Mm -hmm. Bouncing up and down. I see some little girls here jump, jumping around. You better watch that. Give me that in Sirac uh, 26. Everybody got a nasty uncle in their family they could think of. You got to stay the hell away from him. Sirac 26 and uh, 10. Sirach chapter, yeah. chapter 26 and verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly. Let she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. You see that? It's saying the same thing that we were just reading in chapter 30. If thy daughter be shameless, that means you got to know your daughters. Right. Know, the, know your daughter. Know what she likes to look at. When she's ta just talking, watch, observe her face. Observe her eyes. Where do her eyes uh, appear to? Meaning look at. You got to, as a parent, you got to observe everything. That's how you know if your daughter be shameless. Go ahead. Watch over and no, read ten again. Verse ten: If thy daughters be shameless, keep her in straightly. Listen to her conversation. See what she likes to talk about. Is it playing house? Is it playing mommy and daddy? What is her conversation like as a child? You got to know when she's young what she's like. So many kids, you know what they like by the age of five or maybe eight. You've got a pretty good understanding how this child is going to be. We don't. Let she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Right. Is she on the internet looking at things she shouldn't be looking at? Okay. Does she know how to go around the internet block to look at things she shouldn't look at? Does she wait till you go to sleep to cut the TV on to look at things? You gotta, you gotta observe all these things with your daughter. Go ahead. Watch over an impudent eye. And marvel not if she trespass against thee. Right. Watch over an impudent eye as a disrespectful child. Watch over an impudent eye 
and marvel not if she trespass against thee. Wow. Disrespectful. <laughs> Bishop, you know why it says marvel not if she trespass against thee? Because some of your kids are doing wickedness in your house and you act shocked. Yeah. I can't believe it. No, not my baby. Certain things when people come and tell you, yo, I saw your daughter doing such and such, you should be supposed to be telling them, look, thank you. And then beat that ass when you get home. But some of you are shocked. You're in a maze. I can't believe you did this. And you know that your child is, she does have those tendencies. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We've told y'all the story before. True story. I ain't going to call nobody's name. Sister comes in, congregation. Nice little sister, lovely sister. She got children. Her daughter says, hey, I got raped. I'm walking home from school, and these men threw a black bag over my head, <laughs> threw me in the back of a cab, took me someplace and raped me. And she's, oh, Jesus. And I'm looking at her. I'm sitting in the class. I said, she's lying. She's a bold-faced lie. I'm talking under my breath. Mm -hmm. Why? I think Asaph was talking, but I'm just sitting as well. I thought y'all was going, she's lying. She's a skink lying hole. <laughs> oh, just give me a few give me a little while around your kids I'll get to know them I, it don't take me that long I'll, I'll pick a spirit up quick interrogation room <laughs> <laughs> so then I said, I said just bring, bring the police report yep. never, well, the ne never got the police report next week the, the school calls oh, yeah. she was giving a boy a B job in school BJ I mean a B job in school on camera cameras had, cameras had to do it and the Same police didn't even want to do nothing. The friend was taking watch while she was doing it. On the I guess look, to go next. On the lookout. On the lookout, right. What do you say, sir? The police were like it was a joke. When you see the police not taking the matter seriously, like the case that I spoke about earlier about the parents that got arrested. The parents are in jail for beating a child, but the bishop pointed out one of the most important things. They said in the article that a 27-year-old man had sex with a 14-year-old girl. How come he ain't in jail? Because the cops knew she was a hoe. So the father's now trying to be the hoe. You putting your freedom on, line for, on the line for a hoe, for a child that cannot be corrected. And it's the same thing. A lot of you will not look at the behavior of your child and make the decision based on the Bible. You make your decision based on your emotions. Your and I know it's scared, but some of your children cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. The girl was so wicked and so out of order, she wouldn't even give the name of the, of the demon that, la that, that laid yeah, with her. She was protecting him. Protecting him. But, and put her parents in jail mm -hmm. okay. at the same time. That's what you call wax stubborn. And the father's beating her. That don't make no sense. And you know what's heavy? I ain't going to mention this girl's name because Bishop can I ask me not to mention her name. But I do want to talk about her. She, uh, she gets married. Well, not the girl. Uh, they come to the congregation. I'm choosing my words right. Uh, come to the congregation. Mother and daughter. Seemingly very lovely couple. Very lovely family. And they have a the sister. The woman has a sister who just got married. So the young girl, who's about 15 years old, she says to her new, what is it when you, it's her uncle, right? Uncle-in-law now? The sister's, her aunt's new husband. That's her uncle, right? Yes. Yeah, uncle-in-law. Yeah. Uncle, yeah. uncle-in-law. Uncle-in-law. That's what they call uncle-in-law? Okay. Anyway, they just got married. About a month goes by. She's sitting down in the living room with the uncle. And she says, my aunt doesn't know what she's doing, does she? I do you better than my aunt. 15-year-old girl. The uncle's looking at her. And I tell you about them nasty uncles. He's tempted. <laughs> right. Tempted. You know we had to throw the whole family out. We had to throw them out because they ain't right. They'll get the whole, this whole thing shut down. So all you little wicked people, get out of here. Let's read on. Y'all know I got stories for days, but I'll pick and choose which ones I want to tell y'all. Go ahead. Verse 12. She will open her mouth. As a thirsty traveler. There she go. There go. She going to open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. Go ahead. When he has found a fountain. Like she's been, tra like she been traveling in the desert for months. Hmm. That's how she is around men. Open her mouth like a thirsty traveler. Okay. Like she ain't had none in so long. Hmm. And what? And drink of every water near her. And she going to drink of every water near her. That means every man near her. She going to take a drink. 
Go ahead. By every hedge will she sit down. That hedge still represents the man. By every man will she sit down. Go ahead. And open her quiver against every arrow. And open her quiver against every arrow. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Always in men's faces. Always. So, give me 2 Maccabees 7. Now, I could go, we can go in detail about that one right there, but that might turn into a rated X class, and I don't want to do that. Children can be molded. Understand what I'm saying. Understand what the Lord is saying. Children can be molded. They can be taught. If, and if children lose their way, guess what? There's another scripture that says, uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and, and when they're old, they will not depart. They can find their way back, but you have to lay that foundation first. That's what the parable of the prodigal son is about. Now, that's for some kids. That ain't for all kids. That's only for some. Give me 2 Maccabees 7, 26. The book of 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 26. Some kids are just going to die because they ain't right. Sorry. Go ahead. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. So this is the time of the Greeks. The Greeks was telling this, young, this uh, woman, this black woman, to tell her children to eat the pork, eat the swine, and worship idols. So when it says, and when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. Go ahead. But she bowing herself toward him and laughing the cruel tyrant of to scorn, spake in her country language on this matter. O oh, my son, have pity upon me that, that bear thee nine months in my womb. And gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto his age, this age, and endured the troubles of education. Educating your children is a troublous thing. It ain't easy. So, sisters, we take our hats off to you. It's not easy. So it says she endured the troubles of education. That's why they say generally around certain age groups, women are better instructors with kids than men. Because women have a more patience to deal with them. So that's, your, that's the beginning of your role, women. And it's not the white woman's job to raise your children because some of you want to run to the school and tell your oppressor, the middle-aged white woman, who grew up during the time of the turbulent 60s, mm -hmm. she's a product of that, when they sick dogs on you, and say, can you teach my child? She's looking at you. She just want to check. She says, yeah, I'll teach your child. Meanwhile, they sit in the back of the room, and, they, and the woman, the teacher's on her uh, Facebook. She's on Facebook or Twitter. She ain't paying your kid no mind. Classes are overcrowded. She don't give a hoot. Okay, because it's the parent's job to endure the troubles of education. That's what the Most High God says. Go ahead. Verse 28. I, be I beseech thee, my son. So our job is, man, we go out on the streets. We battling in the forefront to wake our people up. We get cursed at, screamed at. Some of us spit at. And the women go... Oh, so one sister said, y'all know this sister. She said, oh, I, wish, I wish I could do that too. No, you don't. No, you don't. The proof is you won't even struggle or take the time out to raise your child. Because your child refuses to sit down and run around, you'd rather be on the street with us fighting with the Negro and the Latin. No, you don't. No, sister. You're just lazy. You don't want to do your job. That's it. I hope y'all understand what's being said. The men have a, a perilous job, and you women got another troublous job, too, raising these children of ed in education. That's what it says. Endure the troubles of education. Okay? Read on. And guess what? As a, parent, as a parent, all children don't learn the same. Some children learn through music. The parent's job is to say, well, my child learns better through music. So guess what the parent has to do? Create a teaching system to song to help. You have to, you have to come up with the creativity to bring it out so the child can grasp the understanding. The same thing you said earlier. Right, and that's like what Sesame Street, Esau says, uh, the white, they say, let's create puppets. Children like these, uh, these, these things so they can learn. Right. ABCs, one, two, three. Esau sat down and, and, and created a whole, uh, help me with some words. Curriculum. A curriculum, how to better it is, how to better train children up in education. And entice them into it. Right, and entice them into edu being educated. That's the parent's job. That is the parent's job. You can glean off what Esau has done and make it, bring it into righteousness on a higher level. Okay? 
and we're bringing this out to you hopefully from this year forth you parents can come up with creative ways some of you are more creative than others you bring it out and we can institute it to all Israel that's what we can do you know what's heavy about again I'm just elated that this subject is, is coming out when the enemy comes up with a curriculum as Deacon Asaph had uh, brought out he, he created a curriculum to entice the children into listening to how he wants to teach them. If he spends that much time to create a program to entice the children, that's telling you how important it is to, to, uh, to deal with the children. If he's going to go through the troubles of educating your children, so to speak, to be on his side, you don't realize that you have to go through these troubles to make sure that they grow up right? They're putting a program together to get your children away from you so that they can raise them up how they want to raise them. The troubles of education, that was, that was deep because teaching children is not easy. That's why I said troubles, trials. There's a whole lot of things. You, got to, you have to force your mind to come up with creative scenarios to entice your children to listen to you in righteousness. That's not just going to come with you just sitting down reading the scripture. You got to come up with things. Make it exciting for them. Give them like, like this program they care. What would you do? That's a TV program. You have to do that with your kids. What would you do in this situation if you see this, if you see that? When you're walking down the street. Me and they, Deacon Ace have talked about that a while ago. You see certain things. Yo, how does sister look? She looked nasty. What scripture is that? That's how you got to deal with these kids. Don't just walk and show them some shoes and dress in the window. <laughs> Teach them something. You got to point out the hole when you see her in the street. Son, look at that hole. Why is she a hole, daddy? You can't tell why? Don't never bring that home. That's what you got to do with your kids. That's what you got to do with your daughters. Y'all point to the men with their pants hanging up their behind. If you bring a nigga like that home, I'm going to kick you out with him. Yep. You ain't bringing that to my house. So they know I already instilled in them that I despise that. And another thing we said with the curriculum, guess what Esau's new curriculum is now? To teach your kids to be gay. They go hard for that, to teach your kids to be gay. And they're being very, very successful, saying now, they got little kids that say, look, let them work out their own sexual preference. If your child wants to come to school dressed like a girl, and he's a boy, it's okay. They say, leave them alone. Let them be free thinkers. So they put in a curriculum in place. Now it's the Bible against what they teaching. And I hope that everybody's here to enforce what the Bible says and to hell with what they teach it. And you know what's heavy about that? When taking up to a next level, that comes through a lot. Of, like I always say, visual, visuals is one of the best forms of teaching. Each camp, each school, you can create little videos, little scenarios with kids, adults, whoever you choose. Like let's say um, this uh, Dickie Yowsa leaves $100 right there on the table. He walks away. I see it. The camera's on me, I look at it, and then I reach for it, mm -hmm. and then you stop the video and go, bing, right. what should he do? There you go. Or, if you see me put in my pocket, what law did he just break? Exactly. Is it A, thou shalt not commit adultery? Is it C, thou shalt not steal? Or is it, there's so many things we can do as a people, but we just have to take the time out to do it. All right. Can I give you a scenario real yeah. quick, Bishop? I just spoke about that uh, before you came in, and two years ago, I'm just going to rehash it again. Two years ago, we've had that scenario where Judah Mack, who was doing the setting up everything, he had dropped $200 somewhere, mm -hmm. and a sister's son found it, mm -hmm. right, right. and returned it, brought it up, and made sure that he got it back. Do you think he just came up with to just do that on his own? His parent, his mother, because it was only his mother that was raised him. She had to probably sit down. I'm just trying to imagine the scenario in my mind. What if I dropped a certain amount of money? What would you do? She had to probably point, give him that same scenario. Mm -hmm. And so in real life, when it actually happened, the word Nintendo or Sega, what do they got these games out here? Xbox, these things are new uh, Adidas Nike shoes. All of that stuff went through his mind, but then he remembered what he was taught. What would you do? I would give it back because that was the troubles of education that my mother taught me. That's how we have to do. Having children is a responsibility. It's not just you just don't let them grow up like weeds in a garden. You have to cultivate them in God's law. If you leave them alone, they're going to get plucked up. Yep. Exactly. And you know where that comes from? I remember my mother used to say 
when she had us, I need to live my life. You don't have kids and then decide you want to live your life. From that child is born, that's your life. Until that child is old enough to fend for themselves. But you mostly hear that with Israelite women. I need to live my life. They want to have kids and they still want to go to the club. And they still want to act like they're free. And you don't see the other nations doing that. They will raise them kids up, send them off, and then live their life. Exactly. Get us uh, 2 Maccabees 6 and 23. This is about the forefather Eleazar. He said something profound in here regarding children, regarding education. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 23. But he began to consider discreetly, and as became his age, and the excellency of his ancient years, and the honor of his gray head, whereunto he was come, and his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by God. Y'all see that? And his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by God. That's what we're reading in Deuteronomy chapter 6. So it is the parent's job, okay, to endure the troubles of education. Come up with creative ways, whether you use puppets, whatever you come up with, okay, but make it a creative way so that your child can grasp it and understand it. Okay, and that way when it comes time to, uh, to go out into the world, they're able to apply what they have learned. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So, it's easier to build, as Frederick Douglass said, it is so much easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. We come in as truth, as adults, we're broken. Our people are a broken people, enslaved, segregated, incarcerated, emasculated, unlearned, uneducated, unable to provide, impoverished, crime-driven, drug-using, immoral, uncivil, self-hating. That's us. That's us, the adults up in here. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.